And today we're going to talk about how to influence somebody and talk to somebody who just don't seem to listen to you. Um, and there's a multitude of reasons why they may not. But I want to share with you three important tips. If you've never met me before, if you've never seen my face before, my name is Dr. Chang Ron. I'm an internal medicine doctor, primary care doctor here in Texas. And, just, and I value conversation between a doctor and a patient. So let's get right into it. So if you're talking to somebody and you feel like everything that you say is going in one ear and just coming out the other, right, and you feel like you're just kind of wasting your breath and they're just, just kind of staring at you blankly say, uh-huh, or they're just completely rejecting everything that you say. Everything that you say, they just kind of reject it. It's like slap it down. It's like you throw them a ball, they just slap it down. Um, that's somebody that's really difficult to talk to. And to be honest with you, I deal with that on a daily basis um, with um, a lot of people. You know, I see quite a few patients in the office and in the hospital, talk to a lot of family members. Um, but there's always an underlying reason why, why that's happening. So let, let's really investigate that. So my tip number one is really dig deeper into why they think a certain way. And uh, um, if, they're, if, some, if you're talking to somebody and they're thinking a certain way, you're saying the opposite of it, they might start rejecting you. And the reason they might reject you is not necessarily going to be um, anything very obvious unless, unless, you, unless you go to, uh, more into uh, why that's happening. So, so what does digging deep mean? I'll give you an example. So I had a conversation um, with a person and I, I, I say, you know what, there's some things that you really should do about your health. And one of the biggest things that's really in your way that... Uh, is going to be saving you a lot of money is if you quit smoking and it'll save you a lot of headaches later in the future you, you know all the bad stuff that smoking causes but um, but you know well, let's work on a plan to quit smoking and she is receptive at first then say no 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 doc no doc I, I gotta have a morning cigarette I, I gotta have my cigarette after breakfast I gotta have my cigarette at, at lunchtime and there's, there's a lot of rejection and it's a lot of rejection probably because this is nothing that, that she's, she's heard before. And so, so I dug a little deeper. I was like, let's talk about the very first time that you had a cigarette. When was that? Why did you have the cigarette? Why, why was it that you continue to smoke after the first time? What satisfaction does it give you? Okay. And believe it or not, a lot of times people don't even remember when they first had their cigarettes, what, why they continue smoking. And it's like, doc, it just became a habit. You know, it's like it's something that I just always done. My family's always done. It just became a habit. I just do it on a daily basis. And I was like, well, you know, I understand that it's a habit, but by definition, habits are cyclical. They're, they're kind of mindless. They're emotionless. But let's put some emotion into your actions, right? Tell me the very first time. Go back into your childhood or into whenever the first time you had a cigarette, what was the first time? A lot of, a lot of people just had their first exposure in college or in high school or in middle school. And uh, they developed it because their, their friends started doing it. And uh, whether it's a cool thing to do or um, it's because they looked up to their father or their uncle or their grandfather who also did the same thing and they continue smoking as well. And then we think, well, okay, well, there's the association. The association is that someone that you looked up to also did it and you wanted to be, emulate that person. So you adopted that behavior. But now that you know that behavior is detrimental to you, let's talk about why that behavior is detrimental to you and does that person still have that behavior right and so and so these are the things that i really dig deep into when we talk about behavioral modifications whether it's smoking whether it's uh carboholics you know where are my carboholics out there comment if you're a carboholic uh, and uh, whether it's um dealing with um drugs um dealing with addicted to diet coke these are the things that we really want to tease out and we'll say hey what is it that is really, really causing you to behave this way and link it to when you first exposed to it and why do you continue doing it? And in that way, um, you're actually validating the other person and saying, hey, you know what? I understand now why you did it. Thank you for sharing that with me. You always want to thank people that's sharing that with you. Okay. Sometimes you don't want to, but I think, I think you should always share, thank people for, for sharing with them because it's a very, very, um, very personal thing. Um, I have my list right here. <laughs> oh, number two, uh, find out what inspires them. 
This is super important. Okay, now that we've teased out, we've dug a little deeper as to why you're behaving in a certain way, let's figure out what inspires you to get up every morning now. So why is that important? And that's important because everybody has different inspirations. If you don't know what they're inspired by, how can you try to influence somebody, okay? Um, and this may be a lot harder to, to really gauge because, uh, because a lot of people don't know what inspires them. They don't think about what makes them get up every morning. They don't think about why they go to work. Um, they don't think about their, their daily inspirations. They just kind of go on autopilot. Um, and that's how you develop really bad habits. So I like to think about, tell me what inspires you. Tell me why you wake up in the morning. Tell me why you go to work. Is it for your kids or for your grandkids? Is it for, is it for your mom? Is it for somebody else? We always, we always do things for other people. <laughs> a lot of times we stop doing things for ourselves, but we always like to do things for other people. So what is it that inspires them? And when you're able to get down to that nitty gritty, what, what is it that inspires you? Then, then you can get to, um, then you can get to another answer is that the person or the thing that inspires you to be a certain way, is your behavior or bad habit going to be congruent with the existence of what inspires you? So what that means, what does that mean, is that let's say, go back to my example of the lady who smoked. Uh, if you live every day for your grandchild and you smoke every day, do you think you want to expose your grandchildren into the fact that you're always smoking every, every day and do you want to pass on that behavior to them? Are they congruent? Do they coexist? Are they complementary? And if not, you might want to think about stopping smoking, right? And so, once again, number one tip is dig deeper into why they behave a certain way. Number two is figure out what inspires them, okay? Uh, my cheat sheet right here. Um, I can't read my handwriting. Oh, <laughs> okay. And then number three is the most important part is to give them respect. Now that they've told you why they, they behave a certain way. They told you what inspires them. Respect them for it. I respect the fact that you love your grandchildren, you love your children, and you're living for them. I absolutely, absolutely respect that. But at the same time, there are some behaviors that are not complementary to your goals, right? And you have to give people validation for them to really listen to you. And so, you know, in my office, and when I counsel people on certain things, whether it's getting rid of Diet Coke or coffee or smoking or, uh, or donuts, you know, those are the things I kind of go through, you know. I go through that process of really digging deeper and understanding why they behave the way they do. I find out what inspires them, and I give them a ton of respect. So I validate the fact that you went through this because I never went through this, and I don't know what it means. But... Here's some things that we can do to make sure that your actions are congruent with your goals. Your actions will help you along with your goals and not inhibit them, All right? And so, um, this is short, straight and to the point. Comment on this um, if you have any comments, if you share any stories. And then I'm actually going to go to the comment section right now and talk to you guys. Okay. Um, Dolores. Oh, thank you for appreciating me. I appreciate you. I totally give you that respect. Uh, Pam, Pam uh, your family does that? Yeah, you know, definitely a lot of family members um, have that sort of attitude, especially if one elderly family member uh, thinks they know a whole lot more about the younger one, right? You guys can relate with me on this, right? Uh, Rhea is here. Thanks for joining, Rhea. Linda, my wife is here. Lisa, you're awesome. You're here too. Sylvia, carbs are your weakness. <laughs> Turn it into your strength. Whatever is your weakness, if you admit it's a weakness, you always try to turn it into your strength, okay? Dominate your weakness. Always try to dominate that. And Deloros, uh, your husband stopped cold turkey. Nice. And cold turkey never restarted. A lot of people are not able to start stop smoking cold turkey. I think, I, I assume you're talking about smoking, right? Um, a lot of people aren't able to stop cold turkey because... Uh, Cold turkey means that they have to change the behaviors up dramatically from one day to the next. And, um, and a lot of people can't handle that because behaviors were developed as a, as a defense mechanism in the first place. And when you develop that defense mechanism and you tear away that defense mechanism from one day to the next without a very strong why, without a very strong reason to do it, then it's really hard to keep that up. So um, if your husband... If your husband um, 
quit cold turkey. I'm very proud of him. And he probably had a really strong reason why he did it in his mind, whether he knows it or not. And that is the key to success. The key to success in anything in life, I believe, is to have a strong enough reason to do it. And always keep that goal in mind. So, I'm going to finish up here. Um, share this if you find this valuable. And then uh, comment in my little comment section um, if you want me to talk about anything else. Or if you sh want to share your own story, I would love to hear your story uh, about uh, how you deal with other people who just won't listen. Alright? Thanks a lot.